Thank you. We travel a lot. Uh, last year, we did 165,000 miles, and that was just with one airline. Uh, this year, we've already been to Europe a couple times, so uh, Singapore around the first part of the year. <clears throat> the rest this year, in August, we go back down under to Australia for a few weeks, come back home for a couple weeks, then we go back to Europe, have an eight-day side trip to Romania. Hey, if anybody wants a good buy on my books, Romania is the place, $3. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to learn Romanian. And uh, so we'll be all over Europe, and then we come home, and then in November we go to Asia. We do have a couple other events for your company uh, in South Carolina, and uh, no, excuse me, North Carolina, Iowa, and um, in um, near Temecula, Marietta. So anyway, we're having a lot of fun, but anyway, let me give you an idea of what is going to happen today. We started with a company nine years ago, and nobody asks us what this company is because we don't talk about it. And we started with four people, and today we have now over 170,000 people in our downline. Last month, this organization grew by over 4,000 new members. And 98% of all of the new people and all of these people came from the original four. Now, when you look at that, does that answer the question, do you need to sponsor a lot of people to build a large organization? Well, see, obviously you don't. But notice I use <clears throat> the word sponsor not recruit, <clears throat> and I'll get into that in more detail in a little bit, because this is a sponsor and teaching business. Now, how were we able to build such a large organization like this? Okay, and, and we don't really work that hard either. You know, this is more about working smart than working hard. I need to ask you a question. You don't have to raise your hands on this question, but just answer it in your mind. When you sponsor a new person into your business, how much training time does it take you before your new person can in turn go out and sponsor someone? Can you do it like in one to two hours? How about in a two to three days? How about in two to three weeks? Do some of you have people you sponsored three to six months ago and they still have not sponsored anybody yet? How would you like to know why those people haven't sponsored anybody? It's so simple when you hear it, okay? The reason that they have not sponsored anyone is because no one has shown them something that they can do. I mean, isn't that simple? And that's what I'm going to do here for you today. I'm going to teach you something that you can do, that anybody you know can do, and once you see how the system works, it'll open up your mind to who you think you can talk to about your business. Because once you realize that absolutely anyone can do this, now you're not prejudging people. So I'm going to teach you how to take a brand new person and teach them, them enough information in 10 minutes or less so they can actually start sponsoring. Not only will you be able to do this in 10 minutes or less, you're going to be able to do this without them having to know virtually anything. Now that's a hard one to swallow, but as I take you through the simple three-step system, you're going to say, gee, you know, you really don't have to know anything to get started. Now, folks, when I say get started, a person is not started in their business until they have sponsored that first person. And the quicker you can get a new person to sponsor someone, the better chances that that person is going to make it and they're going to stay around. So you will say, gosh, you really don't have to know anything to do this. Now, I can teach you the system in 10 minutes or less. 
And I know some of you came a long way, and you want to hear more than 10 minutes, so I have some other information <laughs> that I want to share with you before I get to the system. Now, the thing I didn't tell you about this organization we built over the last nine years is I would say over 90% of them live somewhere between six and 7,000 miles from where we live because they're in Europe. Most of them are in German. They don't even read, speak, or understand English. So people, they say, well, how, how did you do this? How did you motivate them? And I say, you know, we really don't motivate them per se. What we do is we teach the leaders what we call self-motivators. Now, what is a self-motivator? A self-motivator is something <clears throat> that when you are doing it, it's motivating yourself. So all we did was we taught the four people the self-motivators, and then they taught their people, and they taught their people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So everybody keeps motivated because as you do these things, it keeps yourself all fired up. So what I want to do is I want to teach you one of these self-motivators. In fact, a lot of people ask me all the time, you know, what do you do at sizzle sessions? Now, I know most of you have already read my book. Can I see the hands again of the people who have read the book? Okay, great. So you know napkin presentation number eight is about sizzle sessions, getting together with one or more people, usually in a restaurant, to share ideas about your business. Well, beyond sharing ideas, this is a great uh, place to share a self-motivator. And this one I'm going to teach you will do several things for you. First of all, it will make you feel like everybody you know should be in this industry. Absolutely everyone. And it'll give you a whole new look at what we call residual income. Now, I know most of you know what residual income is, and that's money that you receive long after you've done the work. Okay, but I'm going to give you a different way of looking at residual income. So here's, here's how it goes. Let's say that you are living in the home of your choice and you have no mortgage payment. In other words, you own the home. You are driving the car of your choice and you have no car payment, you own the car. Your phone bills are current, your credit cards are current, you have absolutely no bills whatsoever. Now, if you're in that kind of a situation and you were making $10,000 a month, every month coming to you, whether you get out of bed or not, you could live the lifestyle better than most millionaires. But now think about all of your friends who are not in your company, who are not in network marketing. How could they ever hope to have 10000 a month coming to them every month, whether they get out of bed or not? Well, I know most of you have heard since you're a child, wouldn't it be nice someday to have enough money in the bank to live off the interest and not touch the principal? Okay? Well, in today, current interest rates, the kind of an account you would have with a bank where they would actually send you a check each month, it would take $6 million in the bank. Now, how many people do you know are going to have $6 million in the bank by the time they retire? Could you have $6 million in the bank by the time you retire? But see, I'm here to tell you that if you had $6 million in the bank, you'd get $10,000 a month interest income, and or you could have $10,000 income coming from your network marketing company. Look at the difference. To get it from your network marketing company, you sponsor four or five friends, and then you help them do the same. You help them do the same, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Time you get down four or five levels deep, you're going to have 10000 a month coming to you. What does a person have to do to put that kind of money in the bank if they're not in network marketing? 